Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our new home. We moved from the cold of the north to the sunshine of the south. We now live in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's been 10 years in the making, and I can't wait to share our journey with you. Our Nashville inspired menu includes hot and spicy southern fried chicken with a dashing dish healthy spin. No southern sandwich is complete without a creamy coleslaw made with real food ingredients. Easy to make and fun to eat, we are making mac and cheese muffins. And for dessert, let's try a rich, decadent banana pudding. I'm Katie Farrell and today we're going southern to match our move to Nashville, Tennessee. Well, welcome to our new kitchen in Nashville, Tennessee. This is our new home. We just recently moved in and we're so excited to share it with you guys and invite you into our home. So my husband, Sean, is here cooking with me today and I'm so excited to have you guys um, join us in this new part of our journey. And since we're in Tennessee, today's show is gonna be all about Tennessee-inspired food. and. The number one thing I've noticed since we've moved here is hot chicken. Hot chicken. <laughs> so I didn't even really know what hot chicken was, but essentially it's just a spicy chicken and usually it's fried, breaded, and sometimes served on a sandwich. So that's what we're going to start with today. It's on every single menu down here in the south, and so I thought I'd put a healthier spin on it. So we're going to start with our breading ingredients which is a teaspoon each of salt, garlic powder, paprika, and then we have one and a half cup of oat flour that we're gonna bread the chicken in, and then we have some hot sauce, an egg, and a cup of buttermilk, and then about a pound or so of chicken. So we're gonna start by making the breading. Okay. Sean, you can get started on that. Okay. And I'm gonna start by pounding out some of the chicken breasts. So Sean, let's tell everybody about our adventure here. It's quite the journey. Here to Tennessee, from Michigan to Tennessee, and kind of why we decided to move here. Well, uh, I've wanted to move here for a long time, and I think um, you know over the last couple of years you've kind of gotten on board. And uh, one of the biggest reasons we wanted to move here was church, and I feel like God called us down here and. We didn't fully know what that looked like, um, but we just trusted that he would provide and trusted that he would make a way for us to come down here, and here we are. Yeah, and we came and we visited, I'd say, was it two or three times? Yeah, I think it was two times, yeah. Yeah, twice, um, just on a trip. We kind of just started uh, checking out some different areas, and you know, we really felt that God was calling us to Tennessee because like Sean mentioned, he kind of just knew since really oh we gosh. got we first got married. Yeah, I found an old journal from 2009 uh, and one of my goals for 2010 was to move to Tennessee. And I, I don't know why I wrote that. Uh, obviously during prayer, I must have just felt like it was like something I wanted to do. And then I, over time as we moved uh, to Brighton and got married, it just kind of was like a lost dream or, or a lost purpose, if you will, so. Yeah, and he, you know, Sean was, he came back from, I think, a trip that you took just by yourself, and he shared it with me, and at the time, I totally had a closed heart to it. I was like, no way, I'm not leaving my family, I'm not moving to Tennessee. I said, but if you feel that God put it on your heart, pray for me, and if our hearts ever join together, then we'll know that that's something that God's leading us to. Lo and behold, about two, maybe three years ago, God started to put that tug on my heart to come check it out. So I told him, I said, don't get your hopes up, <laughs> but I'll come visit Tennessee with you. We can go just check it out, but don't get your hopes up. And um, when we came, we both absolutely fell in love. So um, there's been a lot to explore, a lot to learn about. Um, one of the biggest things that's been shocking to me is just how friendly how polite, yeah. everybody calls me ma'am. I'm like, I don't, am I a ma'am? I, 
I am. I guess I'm a ma'am. Um, but everyone is just so welcoming and warm here. And I think that's been a wonderful, yeah. a wonderful thing to experience. Yeah. So this chicken is pounded out nicely. You don't want it too thin, but you want it all about the even size thickness so it'll cook evenly. So I'm gonna create the other part of the kind of breading, and this is what's gonna help everything stick to that chicken and also tenderize it and give it that spicy kick that we're looking for. So I did one egg and about a tablespoon or more of hot sauce. So this is really to your liking. Now, we're not true Tennesseans yet. Not, not yet. Because we're trying. I don't think I can handle more than a tablespoon of hot sauce. <laughs> Maybe in the future, but not right now. So we're just going to do about a tablespoon. And um, I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. And then we can dip our chicken in. Okay. Each of these. So Sean, this? do you want to grab the sheet pan? Okay. Okay, so Sean, you can go ahead and spray this sheet pan with a little bit of cooking spray. And I do have on a drying rack or a cookie rack, whatever you want to call it, that's kind of sets into the pan. And that's really important because when you make these sandwiches, if you don't have something uh, that's kind of giving the heat on both sides of the chicken, then you might want to just flip it halfway through because you want both sides of the chicken to be crispy. And if you just cook the top and the bottom is sitting on a pan, it will get soggy underneath. Nobody likes Good tip. soggy chicken. Okay, so in order to bread this, I'm just gonna dip the chicken in the wet and then into the dry. And we're gonna get this nice and coated. And this is what's gonna make it the crispy chicken sandwich that we all know and love. So Sean, you like spicy chicken sandwiches. Have you had a good chicken sandwich oh, yes. since moving here? I haven't had a bad one yet, but um, definitely the favorite so far has been Puckett's, which everybody told me, you know, would be the best. Which is basically a famous restaurant yeah. in Tennessee. We, the first time we went, we just walked in. Yeah, it was it like was lunchtime and we thought we would just get a seat. It was like lunch on and the lunch. lady literally laughed at us. She was like, <laughs> oh, you don't just get a seat at Puckett's. And we were like, oh, okay, we're new here. So um, yes, it's all over Tennessee. I, I think it's just in Tennessee, um, Puckett's, but it's a famous restaurant here and they're famous for their chicken. Delicious chicken. And so what else we'll has been- compares. What else has been a favorite of yours since we? I really love our neighborhood. We um, we have a community pool that we love to visit with the kids, and uh, it's got ama like just amazing neighbors. We actually met some neighbors from Michigan, so it kind of made us yes. feel right at home. Yeah, and it's been so fun to just take walks in our new neighborhood. And we're homebodies at heart. That's just our nature. So just taking a walk around our neighborhood and meeting new people in our neighborhood has been like the most fun thing. Yeah, we've had Most people brunch. would, you know, adventure everywhere. And we, of course, have stayed at like the same three restaurants <laughs> and we take walks in our neighborhood and that's adventure for us. So, but we're loving it here so far. So this spicy chicken is going to go into the oven, as you can tell. The oven is preheated for us and it's going to cook 425 degrees for about 20 minutes and you will want to check it with a meat thermometer. Depending on your chicken thickness, this is one that you really will have to just check. It might need a little bit more time depending. So 165 degrees or more, you'll know it's safe to eat. Then we are going to make some coleslaw to go with it and we're going to serve it up on some buns and it's going to be the best sandwich ever. Okay, to go with our spicy chicken sandwiches, we have coleslaw because here in the South, everything is served with coleslaw. And specifically, we're gonna make a copycat Chick-fil-A coleslaw that is wildly popular here. And in Michigan, we just, before we moved, got a Chick-fil-A in, but Chick-fil-A is actually started in the South. So what better way to top our chicken sandwich with this Chick-fil-A knockoff coleslaw? So we have for ingredients one cup of mayonnaise, a fourth cup of sweetener of choice, four teaspoons of white vinegar, a fourth teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of mustard, and two 14-ounce bags of pre-shredded coleslaw. 
but you could also just grate up your own cabbage as well. So we're gonna make essentially the dressing for this and we're just gonna add our mayonnaise, our sweetener, our vinegar, salt, and mustard to a bowl. And to be honest, you know, we talked a little bit about how I kind of just opened my heart to the thought of Tennessee. And since Sean is just taking a moment to rest while I make this coleslaw, I'm gonna just share kind of really the depth of my heart of how it began to change. And that was just um, through the way that I kind of live my life when it comes to any decisions that I make is always by just following the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, the Word talks about how when we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give us the desires of our hearts. And I think sometimes we get that backwards where, where we think that God will fulfill our desires if we delight ourselves in Him. But really, uh, the way that I see that scripture, and it's really played out in my life, is the more that I seek God and make Him first place and delight myself in Him and His presence, His desires start to come into my heart and they become something that I desire as well. And so I just started to notice that, you know, it was actually on a trip that we were in uh, visiting my parents in Florida. I started to notice that my heart was really changing about living in Michigan and I really started to feel this prompting to, I don't know, just explore different areas. And the very first place that God brought to my heart was Tennessee because Sean had mentioned it before. So when we went to go visit, you know, I initially noticed the beauty and I noticed all different kinds of wonderful things when we came to visit here. But more than anything, I think we both really found just a, a prompting in our hearts to move when we visited a local church here. And um, it was actually just during announcements. It wasn't like some kind of special song or words of the pastor. It was just during announcements. We were both sitting there in church and I was crying. And then I look over and Sean was crying as well. So that was when we kind of both just knew that God was doing something and he was stirring something up. And we took a lot of other steps before deciding to move as well. We, uh, you know, had confirmations from Wise Council that we saw. We talked to our parents. We checked our finances. We, you know, got confirmation from God in the Word of God. And that's how He speaks to us as well. So there were a lot of different factors. And it was such a big decision that we wanted to make sure that we knew that we knew that God was leading us here. So it took a while. It took about two to three years after we first visited that we really knew that this was where God was calling us to and that it was totally confirmed in our hearts. So it was a big decision, but it definitely took time and patience in the waiting um, to really make sure that that was what God wanted for us. So you can see that all just kind of mixed together really well. This stores wonderfully in the fridge if you want to make it ahead of time to put on your sandwiches, but you can serve it just straight away as well. So we're going to get our chicken out of the oven. We're gonna serve this over the chicken sandwiches and you can either do a lettuce wrap kind of chicken sandwich or you could do some buns, whole grain toast, whatever you like to serve it with. Coming up next, no southern dish is complete without mac and cheese as an appetizer, snack or side dish. I'm putting on my dashing dish spin to make this favorite a perfectly portioned side for any dish. Okay, so we're making the perfect side addition, and I like I'm how I'm, I'm, joining, <laughs> I'm joining you into this She's recipe. the main dish, <laughs> I'm the side. Okay, so we're making the perfect side addition for our spicy chicken sandwiches, which is? Macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I was seeing if I'm you could guess. I'm sure. He's observing all of our ingredients here. So the mac and cheese cups. So these are perfectly portioned little mac and cheese cups that you can have on the side of a 
chicken sandwich or whatever you are serving as your main dish. They're also the perfect little light lunch or you can pack them as a little lunch for your kids. So we're gonna start with six ounces of pasta. I use brown rice macaroni pasta, one egg, a half cup of milk, one third cup of Parmesan cheese, two cups of shredded cheese, and one tablespoon of avocado oil. So I have my pasta in the pot that I already cooked. Just cook it to package directions, so nothing fancy about that, and then just put it back in your pot after you strain it. Sean, I will have you add the egg and the milk. Okay. And I will add the avocado oil, and this is kind of a healthier swap out instead of butter. We're doing a tablespoon of avocado oil, and then we'll do the Parmesan cheese and just a little bit of the shredded cheese, the two cups you want to save for the topping. So I'm going to do about three-fourths of it and then save the rest for the topping. Okay, so you can go ahead and add that while I'm stirring it. <laughs> you shouldn't have to add the milk to the bowl, but that's okay. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I thought it was measured. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It won't hurt anything. This is why I love cooking with you so much. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're just gonna give this a nice stir, and it's not gonna look like a whole lot right now. But that egg is gonna bind everything together, and the cheese is gonna melt, and um, it kind of that's what kind of holds the cups together. So we're gonna stir that it's up. Some caramelization. Oh yes. Definitely being caramelized right there. And Sean, you can go ahead and take the ice cream scoop and you can start to scoop that into the muffin tip. So as far as moving here, I would say that we both feel like it's just already home and we've only been here for a few months. It felt like home pretty quickly. And yeah. there's not a whole lot, I have to say, that I miss about Michigan because I feel like God was preparing our hearts for so many years to move here that I didn't feel this tragic loss But of course there are some things that are really hard to say goodbye and those things are family and friends and um, You know our home of over 10 years yeah. in Michigan We're definitely gonna miss but the nice thing is we still get to go back and visit so we're gonna we'll take a trip very soon to Michigan to see our family and friends. But Maddie has been really sweet. And I, I doubt that, well, I know that Oliver will never remember Michigan, but I know Maddie well, for sure. And yeah. she's already cried a few times just at missing her room and some of her friends. And so that's been the challenging part. And moving definitely is a beautiful start to a new journey, but it's also somewhat of a sad thing with all of the goodbyes that you have to, to make. So a lot, of, a lot of friends over 38 years, so. Yeah, that's true. And we both grew up in Michigan. We were born and raised there. So to say goodbye to a place that you've known your whole life is a big deal. Yeah. So we're gonna top these with the rest of the cheese. And then we're gonna bake these off at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. So Sean, you can just go ahead and pop those in the oven. Coming up next, to continue with my Nashville theme, I searched for the perfect southern dessert. I discovered that banana pudding is a treat for all. To round out our Southern inspired menu today, we are going to end with dessert, of course, which is a banana pudding trifle. And I actually did a little deep dive investigation of where the roots came from, and it actually is 
a southern recipe. So even though it's on a ton of menus here in the south, it really was originated in the south. So that's what we're gonna be making, tried and true to the south, banana pudding trifle. And we're going to start with three bananas in the blender. We're gonna add a half cup of sweetener of choice, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one cup of milk of choice, a fourth teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla. So we're gonna add this all to a blender and this is gonna be our banana pudding base. The cornstarch is gonna help thicken it up a little bit. And then we're also gonna add three eggs. So the eggs are gonna be another element that thickens this pudding up nicely. And you know, banana pudding is not an easy recipe. It definitely is something that you have to kind of really temper out on the stove. And I wanted to make a really easy version, of course, because that's everything that I do at Dashing Dish. So instead of kind of working with my stove and a thermometer and really trying to make it perfect that way, I just throw everything into a blender, get it nice and smooth and creamy, and then we're gonna heat it up over a stove. And I promise you, it turns out just as delectable. So we're gonna blend this up. Just until it's nice and smooth, there's no more lumps. And then we're going to head over to the stove top and we're gonna just heat this in a pot until it starts to thicken. So next, I'm going to add the banana pudding to some whipped cream and you can just use the container whipped cream or you can make your own. Okay, and we're just gonna fold this in to the whipped cream and you do wanna make sure that your banana pudding is mostly chilled before adding it to the whipped cream or it will melt the whipped cream immediately. So you just want to make sure to cool it in your fridge or on a countertop before adding it to the recipe. So to make this a trifle, a trifle is just essentially layers of cake and pudding and whipped cream and whatever other ingredients you're adding to it. So to make this a trifle, we're going to add some vanilla wafers to the bottom of either a bowl or mason jars, whatever you want to use. But I love using mason jars for this recipe because it's really cute and festive looking. So it's great for parties or gatherings where you just want to give people their own little dessert. So I'm just going to make two, but it definitely makes more than that. So we're going to layer some of the cookies at the bottom. Then we're going to do some banana slices. And for the whipped cream, I just did one container of True Whip, but you can use about two cups of any of your favorite whipped cream to mix into the banana pudding. And if you don't have vanilla wafers on hand, you could also do graham crackers or any other vanilla-based cracker would be delicious in this. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other where I just layered the cookies and then the banana and then the pudding. And you're gonna repeat the layers until it's done. And I have to say my favorite thing so far about moving to Nashville is just the people here. I absolutely have found it's so easy to make friends and community. We've only been here for a few months because everybody has been so warm and inviting. And I just keep saying, I'm so shocked. Like, everybody is just so nice. And truly, there is something to be said about the South where people are just so hospitable and just um, so warm. And so it's been really wonderful to make new friends here and uh, get to know people. I've already had a few different coffee dates with different moms and we've had play dates and just a lot of things that I really yearned for a lot in Michigan 
Um, but to be honest, I think Michigan was just so cold <laughs> that a lot of the year was just spent indoors. We didn't really go outside a whole lot. So it's nice to have a warmer climate. You definitely can be outdoors with the kids and do play dates at playgrounds and it opens up a lot more activities. So that looks great. And like I said, the pudding is definitely gonna thicken up as it sits in the fridge. So you definitely wanna make these ahead of time so that you can let that pudding get nice and thick with all of the layers. So we're gonna to top it each one with a little bit of crushed cookie, but you could also do some more whipped cream or some bananas, whatever you'd like to top those with. Those look really good and they also are gonna taste divine. So we're gonna finish these up, pop them in the fridge before serving them and we can enjoy them with our Southern menu. Well, it's been so wonderful to invite you guys into our new home. I hope you've enjoyed these Southern inspired recipes. To get all of these recipes and more, head over to dashingdish.com where you'll find resources to nourish your body and soul. Okay, I'll hold him. Bye.